Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach. Before I start, First Kill Graphic Novel, link is in the description. It's on time, the coloring is almost done, and when the coloring for the main story is done, all of the interior art is done, then it's just lettering, a couple covers need to be finished, and the print file, and this thing isn't even due until June. Here is an example of the type of things that get sent back for corrections. These are two adjacent panels, but they do not have a gutter in between them. So one of the things I like to emphasize is with color values, the difference. So having this nighttime sky and this nighttime sky in adjacent panels, I want to show contrast between the panels. So if it's dark here, the sky should be light there. And then it can blend into dark over here. So I purchased a video yesterday about breaking into comics, which always kind of hurts me because it's just such a 20th century concept. The idea that you have to have a portfolio and then make a connection with some broke ass 26 year old assistant editor and then just hope and hope and hope. Just make a comic. Just make a comic and put it up on a crowdfunding platform. And you might say, oh, I don't have thousands of followers. You will make a couple thousand if you have any kind of social media, if anyone shares it in any way and it looks good. I want to remind everyone that five years ago, making $5,000 off of crowdfunding, people were so happy. Five to $10,000 just five years ago for a comic book project on crowdfunding, people were so happy and grateful. Just make a comic and put it on crowdfunding. If it's remotely professional, most likely you will at least break even and then just build from there. So at one point he talks about these partnerships between writers and artists. Donny Cates and Ryan Stegman, Tom King and Mitch Gerads, Tom King and Clay Mann. So when he talked about the benefits of finding a writer, especially a writer that's blowing up or maybe they're just about to blow up, it made me think about this artist right here, Clay Mann. Now, I've got to say, I'm extremely disappointed in LeagueOfComicsGeeks.com because this has been my go-to source since Comic Book DB got shuttered. And this is trash because I looked up all of the books that Clayman has ever worked on. And it basically says he's been in the industry since 2012. But he's been in the industry since 2006 and they don't even have half of these on there. So he got into the industry. He was actually pretty okay from the beginning. I believe this is his first work right here. You know, it's basic stuff, but for a starting out artist, this is absolutely above average. So he started off at a high level. You can always tell a talent hire from a diversity hire because talent hires, weirdly enough, take longer to develop their career. They just have to slowly get better, slowly build a name. So he spent almost a decade at Marvel just kind of doing whatever slowly getting better and then I think the first time he got on my radar screen was Ninjak. I remember Ninjak and I remember his name because his name kind of sounds like a fake name, Clay Man. I'm reading all of the Anacenti Daredevil books right now and one character's name is Skip Ash and I'm like okay technically that's a real sounding name but it sounds like a fake name you would see of an American in a Japanese video game. Clayman also feels like <laughs> that was translated and retranslated a few times and this was the final translation. Here's the problem. If you're going to bet everything on an up-and-coming writer and your association with them, you might want to check their testosterone levels first <laughs> because this is Clayman drawing a script written by Matt Kent. And we get this awesome badass cover, cool fights, you got the gun and the tech, beautiful women, and then you attach your wagon to Tom King's star, and you get to do this. Middle-aged, depressed Tom King as Magnum P.I. as Bruce Wayne, doing Pilates with his mommy wife, and then literally getting cucked at the hotel bar. They sit down together. This dude sits down next to them. Just straight up starts squeezing Selena's thigh. Mind you again, Bruce was right next to her the entire time. He's sad and he's passive and just, we all know who's in control. We all know who's in control. 
And then after this run, they went on to Heroes in Crisis, in which Clay Man got to draw stuff like this and this. A whole lot of this. Now, I will say that Clay Man has the potential or had the potential to be the next Jim Lee. And he has gotten into an entangling alliance that has gotten him somewhere in his career, but in my opinion has hobbled him. When you're talking about just pure artistry and skill, I don't think anyone in the mainstream comes close to Clay Man. But what he's been relegated to is the guy who works with Tom King. Clayman specifically has a thing where he draws very heroic forms, even if they're not doing anything remotely heroic. And he reminds me a lot of Jim Lee for one main reason. Jim Lee was an adherent of George Bridgman, who created books about drawing. And he had a very solid style. It was all about major forms, like you see here, the shoulder. And they're very solid. He'll put a lot of detail within the form, but the exterior of the forms are very basic shapes, very strong basic shapes. And in that regard, he's very similar to Clay Man. Unfortunately, Clay Man has not followed the same trajectory. Jim Lee got very lucky. They had him try out on Alpha Flight, then they put him on Punisher, a huge character. He got some very good scripts by Carl Potts. Go reread that era. People don't talk about it a lot, but that was an awesome era. Then he went over to Chris Claremont. Chris Claremont seemed to be inspired by Jim Lee and played to his strengths, which was a lot of action. The absolute privilege I had getting into comics as a weekly hobby in 1988. Oh my gosh. And this was not some huge special event. I mean, yeah, it was a giant sized issue, but this was just a weekly comic. Art of this level was just what you would get <laughs> just on a weekly basis. It was absolutely insane. So my point is, I don't believe, you know, being Leonardo DiCaprio to Martin Scorsese, I don't think that's really a thing in comics. You have to be attached to great characters with at least good writers. And now that Clay Mann has attached himself to Tom King... I think he is wasting the absolute best years of his career on illustrating the symbolic midlife crisis of a man who has the testosterone levels of a 90-year-old. Anyway, before I go, First Kill Graphic Novel, link is in the description. Thanks for watching. Bye.